Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial. My name is Attempster. Today I'm going to be going over how to make animated textures for your games in the Blender Game Engine. So if I press P, as you can see, we have a spinning object, but really that isn't a spinning object at all. It is just a stationary plane. And over here, as you can see, we have an animated texture which is playing. So in this tutorial, what I'm going to be going over is a plugin for GIMP that will let you create these awesome animated maps and will then allow you to get stationary objects and play moving textures on them. So the first thing we need to do is install the plugin. So down in the description will be a link. It will look something like this. And basically what we need to do is select all of it, press Control C, or you can go edit and copy and then we're gonna open up our browser, paste it in, press enter. When you get to the page, as you can see, we have the title of it, GIMP Layers to Animated Texture, and right here we have installation instructions, uh, how to use it, and then the actual script itself, which is fairly large, and then a changelog and some credits. Basically what we need to do, according to these installation instructions, is go to the top here of the script, and we just want to drag over the entire thing until we get to the bottom. So get that last line in, then again, control C to copy. And then we want to open up Notepad and press control V to paste. So once we've pasted it in, what we need to do is under file, click save. And instead of .txt, we want to actually get rid of all of that. We're going to give it a name, so I'm going to call it uh, layers dash two dash and then just animated texture and I guess a dash between that as well okay layers to animated texture then at the end what we need to do is type in dot and then SCM like that and then save as type we want to get rid of that and just do all files okay and that's currently saving to our desktop so click save and then now if we hit this little button in the corner we'll go to our desktop and as you can see, there's a file here. It won't show up as anything because our computer can't read it yet. Then what you need to do to install the script is go to your computer and then go to the local drive or the one with the Windows logo on it. Double click on that. And then you want to go to users and you want to go to your users. So just this one right here. And then if you already have GIMP, which hopefully you do, it will have already made a folder called .gimp and then whatever version you have here. So double click on that. As you can see, lots and lots of folders. What we want is the script folder here. Double click in that. So once we're in there, you'll notice I already have my files here. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and delete both of those. Then I'm gonna get my layers to animated texture, SCM, and drag it into my scripts. Now I'll close that. If you have GIMP open already, make sure that is closed. Then we're gonna go ahead and open it up. And we'll just let it refresh and put in all the extensions. Now you'll notice you have a new tab up the top here called script foo. So you can click on that, it'll pop up with second life and then a frames to texture module. So there we go, that is the plugin installed. So now I'll show you guys how to use it. Basically what we can do in Blender, if you've used it before, you'll notice you can do lots of cool stuff like possibly make smoke or animate objects moving around. And then you can go along to your render tab here uh, set it as an image sequence and then click render and it'll render out your animation as lots of different image files. So right here what I've gone and done is I've set up a folder with a test inside and I've rendered out 11 different frames of animation. So I got it to start at frame 1 and finish at frame 11 then rendered that all out and made sure the background was transparent. So just to do that if you're not sure when you're in Blender Render, scroll down under Shading, select Transparent, and you have to save your output as RGBA, right there. So now that you have your texture sorted out, or you've got all the frames you want to use, we can go into GIMP, like so, and then we can click File, Open as Layers, and then we'll go to our desktop where our animated texture render is. So double click on that, and in there you'll see uh, 11 frames of animation. Now we can't fit in 11 frames into one grid, there will obviously be a couple spaces here or there, so we need a nice round number, so maybe 10, the closest one. So I'm going to select the first one, hold down shift, and then select number 10 as well, and then click open. 
So once they're loaded all in, you'll see a funny shape like this. Don't worry about it, it's just all the layers stacked on top of each other. Once you've got all your rendered images out into different layers like so, what we can do is go to the script foo function, select second life, and then click frames to texture like that. Then on the number of horizontal frames and vertical frames, we need to set that to something that will fit 10 different frames. So 5 and 2, 5 times 2 is 10, there we go, 10 frames done. Now down here, the generate LSL script we don't need, Blender doesn't need any scripts for animated textures, so we can deselect that. Then you can click OK, and it will now pop up with your animated texture, which has just been generated. So now I don't really like the colors, so I might decide to change the color of the entire texture. So I'm going to go to brightness and contrast, and turn up the brightness, turn up the contrast, just so we can see them. Then I'm going to click OK. And then one more thing, you'll notice the top here is the size of the image. It's 2700 by 1080. Now that is very big. And if you're using proper renders, so 1080p renders, and you're putting them all together, you're going to end up getting things like 7000 by 8000 or something crazy like that. So once you have this exported out like this, what we need to do under image is go to scale image, and we want to set this to a nice size. So get the larger number up here, and change it to something reasonable. So maybe 1024 or 2048, those sort of values. Then click scale, and now it will have made the texture a lot smaller. So there we go, that is the animated texture done. Now I've got that finished, I can go to file, export, and just go to my desktop here. And I'm just gonna call this animated texture, animated texture, like so. Then click export and export that out. Cool, and now we don't need this anymore. We've exported it, so you can close that and close this one as well. And so now we can close GIMP as well. We're done with that. Close that. And if you go to our desktop here, you'll notice we have an animated texture file right here. So what I'm gonna do is go into Blender, open up a new file. And first of all, up here, I'm gonna set it to Blender Game. Then down here, GLSL, animation frame rate of 60. And then I'm gonna press X, delete the cube, shift A, add a plane, press S to make it slightly bigger. So something like that. And then I might wanna call this animated texture, like that. And next thing we need to do is press numpad seven to go into top view. Then we're gonna press tab to go into edit mode, or you can just click it down here. Because this is just a plane, this is a lot easier to set up than any other objects. So we can just click U, unwrap, or you can just click U and reset, like that. And now if we make a new window here, and go to UV image editor, uh, you'll notice we have a square cutout and it's filling the entire area. Then what we need to do is press tab again to go back into object mode or you can just click it down here. Then we're gonna give it a new material. I guess you can also call this animated. And then we'll make this a bit bigger here. Turn off specular, we don't want it to be shiny. You can turn off back facing if you want, up to you. I'm gonna turn on shadeless and then I'm gonna scroll down and very important down the bottom here, transparency check that box and then click the arrow and we don't want any transparency. Then go to the texture panel here, click new texture, image or movie, uh, UV, and then under the influence here, make sure color is selected and alpha is selected as well. Okay, and then we'll click open and we'll go to our desktop and as you can see, animated texture, this one here, click open image and there we go it pops up now in this window we'll press tab again to go into edit mode or you can just switch it and then in a UV image editor here what we can do is select this image icon down here and we can click animated texture like that and it will readjust everything to fit the entire texture so now we can go to the bottom here, set it to textured, and we should be able to see our animated texture projected out. Now the next thing we need to do is in our UV image editor window here, we need to open up this tab. However, if you're not in 2.7, so if you're in possibly 2.65 or something, it's in this tab I think it is, so this one right here. However, if you're in 2.7 upwards, it's in this tab here. So we'll go into this tab. You can trigger this tab by pressing N, 
and this one by pressing T like that uh, so we want this one over here and what we're going to do is in the game properties down here what we want to do is check animated and also check tiles now the tiles here is very important we're setting out how many frames of animation we have so just like in GIMP we set up 5 like that by 2 then the next thing we need to do is here on the end we need to set that to as high as it will go so 9 is the highest considering we're starting at 0 so 10 in total and then down here is the speed for your animation so 1 is very slow so maybe we'll turn it up to something like 10 again this depends on your texture and how fast you want that animation to be playing as well so now if we go into our 3D viewport here and press tab and press P you'll notice it doesn't work, it just twitches. So one last thing we need to do is save the actual file to get it to work. So up here, go to File, Save, and we'll name it something like Animated Texture Test, like that, uh, Desktop, or you can save it in Documents or wherever, then click Save as Blend File, and now we've saved it, it will have changed. If it hasn't changed, just go to File, Open Recent, and select the most recent file, which you just saved, then open that up, and now you'll notice there is only the first frame of animation there, which means it's working. So now if we press P, there we go, there's our spinning animation going. The only time this will not work is if you add it all in and you haven't saved the .blend file, so very important, make sure you save it before you do anything else. So there we go guys, that's the end of the tutorial. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like, comment or share, all of that stuff is greatly appreciated. If you want to see more, be sure to subscribe, but otherwise, hope you enjoyed the tutorial, have an awesome week, and I'll see you guys in the next one.